Yes, I am glad to be back to Rock Church again. Um, thank you. Thank you for the privilege, the opportunity to come every year, every year. I really appreciate that. I do have a couple newsletters out there, a couple one-page newsletters. Feel free to take them both as you go this morning. Love to have you sign up to receive it on a monthly basis so that when you get the information, uh, you will... You pray for us. You pray for uh, our work around the world. So appreciate that greatly. As Pastor Jared said, uh, our satellite broadcasting out of Finland happens every day, five days a week. We do a thousand programs a year, uh, all targeting the Middle East from Morocco to Pakistan. Uh, millions and millions and millions of people are hearing our programming every day. Uh, we know that because we're getting unbelievable response 250 to 300,000 people every month are responding are responding to our ministry in very very dark difficult places Saudi Arabia Iran Iraq all over the Middle East and um, we actually have a full-time office now in Egypt uh, with 16 full-time workers and that's all they're doing is doing the follow-up on these people in the in the Middle East that are responding to our ministry some are underground Christians some are curious Muslims. We have marvelous testimonies every week of people who are coming to Christ and people who are being ministered to through our ministry. And then our media campaigns. We've done 105 cities now around the world. You, you, you saw what we did in Tanzania and South Sudan this past year. We are targeting Ukraine, as you saw and then Mongolia, and then Thailand, and then Dakar, Senegal is the fourth one that we're actually looking to do as uh, nations begin to open. How many are looking forward to nations begin to open <laughs> to, to COVID kind of... I was praying about it this morning, that it would just kind of begin to dis just go away, right? In the name of Jesus, amen. So, uh, so... Be praying for us for those media campaigns as well. All right, 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, starting in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Father, we thank you for the hope that we have in Christ that is an eternal hope, that is hope beyond today. Thank you, God. For the reality that this hope does not die. We rejoice in it this morning, Lord. And we just pray as we spend a few minutes in your word today. That it would, it would edify your people. It would strengthen them. It would give them a sense of encouragement and hope. For today, tomorrow, and eternity. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, so Peter here says that we have been a born again to something. How many are born again? I know you are. So you are born again to something. You're born again to what, what, what Peter calls a living hope. The word hope is a word that, that, that speaks of anticipation, looking forward to something. It may not be happening right now, but we look forward to something with joy. That's the focus of anticipation. Some of you remember the when the, the, the day of your wedding and how you looked forward to that day with anticipation, with joy. That's, that's the kind of word that Paul is, is expressing here today. Is, is that 
is that we have been born again to a living hope and anticipation with joy. A hope that does not die. A hope that does not dissipate. A hope that does not have a shelf life. A hope that is not impacted or weakened by our human condition. Why do we know that? Because Peter's writing to a group of people probably somewhere around 64 to 67 AD. All right? And uh, he's writing to Christians who were exiles. He reveals that right in this text. These were exiles. These were persecuted Christians. They were from Jerusalem originally. And now they, 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 they had, they'd had to leave that area because of persecution. And we see, we see the beginning of that story in, in the book of Acts chapter 8. Where it says, Saul approved of Stephen's ex execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. And, and then uh, it, it goes on from that because Acts chapter 11 reveals. Now those that were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch. And now here we see that they not only uh, were, were scattered to those areas, but now they're 700 miles from home, all the way up into northern Turkey, right on the border of, 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 of the Black Sea area, areas that, 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 that Peter identifies as Pontus and Galatia. Remember the book of Galatians was written to the people there, Cappadocia and Bithynia. It's interesting to me that, that, that Paul had, had intended to go to that area. Paul had intended to go to that region, but it's interesting that the Holy Spirit forbade him. I wonder if we are open to the check of the Holy Spirit on our intentions. Here, Paul, it made sense. It was logical. It was the next place for him to go. It made all kinds of sense. These are lost people. They needed the gospel, you know, and, 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 and so Paul was planning on going there, but the Holy Spirit forbade him. The Holy Spirit checked him. I know that sometimes I've, I've walked right over <laughs> the check of the Holy Spirit in my own life. Maybe you've done the same thing. But here we see that Paul responded to that, and because of that, he receives the Macedonian call to go to another area of the world that desperately needed the gospel. Why did God do that? Because he knew this whole group of Christians were going to be going up into this area, and they would be bringing the gospel with them to that area. God would be using them instead of Paul in that area. And so <coughs> Peter identifies here that we have a living hope. We have, a, we have an anticipation with joy, even in the midst of persecution, even in the midst of difficult times. And, and my question today, is this true? Or are we whistling in the dark? Okay. Is this, does this actually work? Is, is it possible to have, a, have anticipation with joy? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there, are, there are Christians today in places like North, North Korea, and Iran, and, and in different difficult places in the world. Some of them are in prison camps today. 50 to 70,000 Christians are in prison camps today. I'm just going to grab my water here for a second. And uh, I, I, I just heard a statistic today that one out of eight Christians in the world live in a persecuted region. One out of eight. That's, that's amazing, isn't it? And, 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 and so, is it, in, is it possible to live in difficult times, in difficult places, with anticipation, with joy? And Peter says yes. Peter says yes. So, no matter what your circumstances are, no matter what's going on with COVID or or, or, or your personal lives. I know, you know, there's sickness and, 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 and there's concern for family and, and children and all these things. But in spite of all of that, we can have a living hope, anticipation with joy. And 
Peter identifies the source of that. Where does it come from? Bob Goff, who wrote a book called Love Does, says this. Sometimes God lets us lose hope for a moment. God lets us lose hope for a moment. So we'll retrace our steps and find him all over again. Because our hope is found in the person of Jesus Christ. In fact, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 1. I could almost hear Paul shouting this. Jesus Christ is our hope. Jesus Christ is our hope. He says it again in 1 Timothy chapter 4. We have our hope. Our anticipation with joy. We have our hope set on the living God. It's for that reason that we, we see Paul in Romans chapter 12 and verse 12 putting two opposites together. Things that we would never put together, he puts together. He says, rejoice, rejoice with hope and be patient in tribulation. He puts those two things together. Rejoicing and tribulation. He puts them together. Because of our relationship. To the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and so. We have this wonderful. Wonderful reality in our life. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. Paul defines. The peace of God. As something that is beyond. Human understanding. It's not something that. That's. That's. Connected to our natural uh, life experience right now. It's something that goes beyond that. Corrie Ten Boom, most of us know that name. She lived uh, during World War II. And, and she and her sister and her father owned a clock shop in Holland. And, and they were, they'd put an artificial wall in their home. And, 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 and were hiding Jews in that situation. Uh, they were discovered by the Nazis doing that. And, and all three of them were put in concentration camps. Um, Corey Ten Boom's sister perished in the concentration camp. Her father died in the concentration camp. She uh, survived that horrific experience. And, and she traveled uh, for many, many years, traveled all over the world, and had a way of, of sharing profound truth in very, very simple ways. This is one thing that she said. If you look to the world, you will be distressed. Uh, and <laughs> we read the news, <laughs> we watch the news, uh, it can be distressing at times. If you look to the world, you will be distressed. If you look within, I, I, I so appreciate her honesty. If, if you look within, if you focus too much inside, you will be depressed, she said. Because <laughs> none of us are perfect. We look within and we, and, and how many see your own weaknesses, you know? We certainly do. We see those things within our own lives. But if you look within, you will be depressed. But she says, if you look to Jesus, you will be at rest. Even in the most difficult, horrific circumstances of life. So, <clears throat> this issue of hope, anticipation with joy, is not, not something that comes from within you. It's not something that you just pull yourself up and say, I'm going to have hope. I'm going to have hope. No, it is, it is God's supernatural work in us. It's God's supernatural grace for us. It's God's supernatural anchor in our storm, in our personal storm. And so Peter says it this way. He says, according, listen to his words, according to his great mercy. You know what the word mercy means? It means compassion that has power. Compassion that has power. Now, if if Pastor Jared would 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 speak uh, would speak to me and say, Dave, I, you know, you just pray for me. I, I'm a million dollars in debt. <laughs> Thankfully, that's not true, right, Pastor? You know, but, but, but if he say, say that, I, I would feel sorry for him, but I could not have mercy because I, I wouldn't have power to intervene. But, but, but Peter says that God has compassion that has power. He has mercy. And out of his compassion that has power, he causes us. He causes us. You don't do it. 
He gives it to you. He pours it out upon you. Now you and I have to be open to that, don't we? We can deflect it. We can allow fear to come in and, and consume us and, 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 and anxiety and insecurity. We can allow those to become dominant in our lives or we can choose to receive God's great hope for us through His great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope. How? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have a living hope because Jesus not only died and was buried, but rose from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is our living hope today. Because Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. We have a living hope. We have anticipation with joy today because of who Jesus is and where Jesus is even today. And I want to encourage you to regularly, I could, I could, I could say daily, give some attention. Focus on, thank God for the power of the resurrection. It is central to your life as a Christian. In fact, P, uh, Paul says it this way in 1 Corinthians 15. He said, if Christ is not raised, your faith is futile. You are, my goodness, you are still in your sins, he said. Those who died in Christ have perished. But, in fact, Christ has been risen from the dead. How wonderful. I want us to think about it for a couple minutes this morning. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples, except for Judas. Judas comes into the garden with the high priest and the high priest servant and the Roman soldiers and the temple guards. And they've come to arrest Jesus. Judas comes and, and, and does this treasonous kiss to Jesus. And in the midst of it, you see Peter grabbing his sword and he wildly slashes and cuts off the ear of the high priest servant. His name was Malchus. And in the midst of the confusion, Jesus picks up Malchus's ear and he heals him. In the midst of all of this that's going on, we see the healing power of Jesus Christ still being manifested. I believe the reason we know Malchus's name is because he became a follower of Christ. I think you would have as well if Jesus had healed you under those circumstances. Jesus is taken and in the process, there are false charges against him. Horrific beating. In fact, if you read Isaiah 52, 53, it tells us that, that, that the face of Jesus was marred more than any man. Think about that for a minute. His beating was so horrific that you probably could not even have recognized him as a human being. So marred. So much blood lost. They put a cross on his back, but he's not able to carry it. He's too weak. He's too weak from what he's experienced. And there's a man by the name of Simon of Cyrene who's traveled almost 500 miles from northern Libya with his two sons, Alexander and Rufus. And as they're coming into the city of Jerusalem, they see this great crowd and this man trying to carry his cross. And one of the Roman soldiers takes him out of the crowd and says, you're going to carry his cross. I think probably Simon of Cyrene, for the rest of his life, treasured the reality that he was able to carry the cross of Jesus. I don't know if there were words spoken between Jesus and Simon or not, or if it was simply a look of appreciation, but it must have been quite an experience for that man. We believe that his son Rufus is named, actually, in the book of Romans, became as well a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus is now on the cross, and we know what he says. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. The thief on the cross turns to him, and he says amazing words of revelation. He says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Where in the world did he get that? <laughs> How did he know that Jesus had a kingdom? He certainly didn't look like he had a kingdom. He looked like a man that was dying on a cross, and that's exactly what was happening. But the thief on the cross saw him for who he was. Remember me. 
when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said those wonderful words today. Today. You will be with me in paradise. Jesus says, I thirst. They gave him sour wine to drink. And in the process, he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we know why. Because of my sin. Because of your sin. God stepped back and allowed Jesus to take upon himself the sin of the world. Jesus cries and it's finished and there's an earthquake and there's darkness and, there, and, and tombs are opened and, 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 the, and, and, and the curtain in the temple is torn in two. Jesus says, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he dies. And the scripture makes clear to us that he goes to paradise. He told the thief that would happen. He takes the thief with him and he goes to paradise. First Peter chapter 3 hints for us that Jesus actually preached to those who were in prison. Preached to those even going all the way back to Noah's day. First Peter chapter 3 verse 19. On the third day, Jesus is resurrected from the bed by, by, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's wonderful. In Romans chapter 8, it reveals to us the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Isn't that amazing? It's humbling. The reality of the precious Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. What a powerful source of, of the presence of God dwells within you. In fact, the power of the Holy Spirit was so powerful when Jesus was raised from the dead that there were people who actually, at the same time, actually came out of their tombs. It says that believers actually came to life again. Mysterious, isn't it? We don't know too much about that. Just a quick reference from Scripture. Mary sees Jesus in the garden after his resurrection. Jesus said, don't touch me. I haven't yet gone to my father. What happens? He goes back down to paradise and he takes all of the Old Testament saints with him. Abraham, Moses, Elijah, David, Joseph, all of the Old Testament saints. He takes them with him. And now he goes into the presence of God. Why do we know that? Because, because Paul makes it clear to us now that when you die and when I die, we don't go to paradise anymore. No, no, no. We, we go into the very presence of God. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. All right? So Jesus is entering the very presence of God. And as he enters the presence of God, he doesn't just kind of walk in the back door. No, no, no. He's coming with all of the Old Testament saints with him. And as he comes with all of the Old Testament saints with him, there are millions of angels in heaven. And this is the victorious entrance of Jesus, the triumphal entry of Jesus into the very presence of God after he had won the victory over sin, death, hell, and the grave. Marty already read it this morning, but let me read it again. And I believe... I believe just in my own heart, I don't have proof of this, but I wonder if these very words of Revelation chapter 5, that will be a future event, was also a past event. Oftentimes we see that in scripture, a double reference. And this is the words, then I looked and I, and I heard around the throne, living creatures and the elders, the voice of millions of angels saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all of them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Heaven had never been louder than that moment. The moment when Jesus returned victorious. Praise be unto God. And hell had never been more silent than at that moment when Jesus entered heaven. Jesus says to those in heaven, I'll be right back. He comes back to earth, spends 40 days, and reveals himself to his disciples and to many others. 500 at one time, 
probably Mary and Martha and Lazarus, probably uh, uh, blind Bartimaeus and Zacchaeus, probably many others. Simon of Cyrene, very possibly. All these different people he reveals himself to. And then he commissions his disciples with the gospel of Jesus Christ to proclaim it to the whole world. He says, it's good, it's good for you that I go away because if I go away, I'll send the Holy Spirit to you who will abide with you forever. And Jesus ascends into heaven. And the disciples are watching him go into heaven. And as they watch him go into heaven, there's two angels standing beside the disciples. And the, and, and the disciples keep watching. I, I like these little pictures of, of humor in the scripture. And, and, and they keep watching. And they keep watching. And finally the angels can't wait any longer. And they say, why do you guys keep looking up into heaven? <laughs> the same Jesus who you've seen go into heaven will so come in like manner. So Peter says to us, your anticipation with joy comes to you through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it needs to be something that we don't simply focus on on Easter Sunday, but we should focus on it regularly. And I would encourage you to focus on the resurrection every day. And through the, by looking back to the resurrection, you will have hope. You will have hope. But not only that, Paul goes on to say that not only do we look back to the resurrection, but we also look forward to heaven, to our inheritance. He says, born again to a living hope through the resurrection to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you. No wonder Jesus said that we were to pray, your kingdom come. I pray it every day. Why? Because we are not only look back to the resurrection, but every day we are to look forward to the return of Jesus Christ. We are to look forward to heaven. Paul says, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. God has a wonderful future for you. You have every reason to live with anticipation. To live with joy. No matter what our human experience is here. That's why people in difficult circumstances right now today can go through those circumstances still with hope. Because of the resurrection. Because we look back to the resurrection. And because we look forward to our inheritance in heaven. The scripture says it's imperishable, it's undefiled, it's unfading, it's kept in heaven for you. So we look back and we look forward. Number three, we don't only look back and look forward, but we look into the scriptures to find hope. We look into the scriptures to find hope. Romans 15 verse 4 says, Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that through the endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures you might have hope. You ignore the word of God at your own peril. Hope comes to you because of the resurrection, because of our inheritance in heaven, but also because of the word of God. Every day, every day, every day, you will find hope through the scripture. How powerful is the word of God. Hillsong wrote a song recently, and these are the lyrics. Before the earth knew its foundations, you spoke the destined creation until the end when all is withered. Then still your word will endure. The lamp unto my feet, the light unto my path. Your word will not be shaken. Your word will never fail me. Like a fire in my bones, like a whisper to my soul, your word is revelation. If you want hope today, if you want hope today, look back to the resurrection. Look forward to your inheritance in heaven and look into the scripture. And lastly, this morning, we don't want to look back. We not only look forward, not only do we look into the scripture, but we find hope because we look up to the Holy Spirit. Praise be unto God. 
The same chapter, Romans 15, verse 13 says, May the God of hope, isn't that a beautiful statement? May the God of hope, <laughs> he is your God of hope, anticipation with joy. May the God of hope fill you. Again, it's God filling you. It's not you doing it yourself. It's something that God puts on you. Praise God. Something that God puts within you. Hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that by the power of the Spirit, you may abound in hope. <laughs> so we look back to the resurrection. We look forward to heaven and to our inheritance in heaven. We look into the scripture to find hope. And we look up to the Holy Spirit. Jesus tells us, if a natural father will give good gifts to his children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who are perfect? Is that what it says? No. To those who've got it all together. Those who never make mistakes. Is that what it says? No. It says to those who what? Ask. A-S-K. So I want to encourage you every day, look back to the resurrection. Look forward to heaven. Look into the scripture. And ask. I did this morning. Ask that the Holy Spirit would come upon you. And I will guarantee you that no matter what your life experience is here on earth, you will have hope. Would you stand with me this morning? As I, as I, as I close this today, I want to just speak this as a, as a word over you today. All right? And, and so I encourage you just to lift your hands to the Lord and receive the word of the Lord this morning. May the God of hope fill you, fill you in your life experience, as difficult as it may be. May he fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you, you, and me, we would abound in hope. We receive it today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Would you just lift your voice to the Lord in thanks today for the hope you have in Jesus Christ, no matter what, no matter what. In Jesus' name, we rejoice in you this morning, Lord. Thank you for hope. Thank you that it doesn't come because we're strong. Because we have it all together. Because we know what we're doing. It comes because you, out of your great mercy, have <laughs> poured out hope upon us. We rejoice in it today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Dave. You will, uh, you'll have a lot to uh, kind of contemplate throughout today and the week, right? What source of hope do you need to tap into? What is God calling you to tap into? The resurrection, the return, the Word, or the Holy Spirit? So let's be open to that. Pastor Dave will be out in the foyer. Uh, there is a table out there, so you can take... Uh, uh, newsletter. You can sign up for the, the monthly newsletter that goes out via email so that you can stay uh, informed uh, in regards to the ministry. So uh, make sure you stop by there. And, uh, and again, the, the boxes for your giving are on the left to the door on your way out. We continue to do so electronically or in the mail if you're at home and thank you for that. So as you leave, may the grace and the peace of our God be upon you. May he watch over and keep you and encourage one another as you go. God bless. It's been good to worship with you today.